Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Uh, here we are after the treatment center. Sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little jumbled right now. Um, A, because it's been a little bit. I know, uh, first, before anyone gives me any flack, all right? They're like, you full on. Yeah, I put out a video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It does it for like a week and then misses a Friday. Look, all right, like I had some things come up. I didn't plan properly. It was last minute. Excuses, excuses, blah, blah, blah. However, I have a peace offering, okay? We can reconcile our differences here. We can think about this. Um, I come bearing gifts in redemption for this mistake that I have made. I am truly repentant in that I have <laughs> some gold files. That's right, your boy went back to the director's room. He got the gold files out of there. And now we're gonna read them. Yeah, it makes sense. This is one of the last ones, huh? Oh, excuse me. A little burpy, but anyway. We got Sun, Moon, Star Key. Three different types of card keys generally found in the safes of each room and used to open the AB gate. Without them, you can't open the AB gate to play the AB game, which means you can't gain BP. In other words, getting one of these cards is the first step in your escape. The sun key is used during the first round, the moon key is used during the second, and the star key is used during the third. Dude, some of these files suck. I'm not gonna lie, like, bro, really? Like, you're not gonna get to the director's room without understanding this. Like, come on, dude. Like... A slingshot, an elementary device that uses rubber to, uses rubber to launch small projectile. Frequently used by adolescent ne'er-do-wells, can be used as a necklace, but this is not recommended. Use as a necklace? That's very bizarre. Yeah, I guess like if you put like your head in this way, right? So this would be on like the back of your neck and this would <laughs> trape in front of your chest, but like, like why? Like actually, and honestly, like slingshots are pretty, they're not super loose, right? Like the band on them's not that big. It's probably be more of a choker than anything. Oh, what did that say? I'm so sorry. Test site mystery. The site in question was for a simulated manned mission to Mars held in the Nevada desert. On New Year's Eve 2028, the audio logs from the simulation contained a woman's voice, assumed to be one of the test subjects, saying the following. Six of us are dead. Counting myself, there are only three left. I... I guess you could say I killed them. No, no, that's not quite right. Not just them. Not just these six. All of them. All six billion. Most evidence seems to suggest that this was the beginning of the Radical Six outbreak and that the Nevada facility was the epicenter of the pandemic. Termites, a general term used to refer to the insects and the epiphany of ter termitodi? Termit termitoidi? In the epifamily, not epiphamy, epifamily. In the epifamily of termi or termitoidae of the cockroach order Blattodia. That's right, even though they aren't some even though they're sometimes called white ants, termites aren't even in the same family as ants. They're in the cockroach family instead. Also, king crabs are in the hermit crab order, and the remora is in the Persiforms order. Persiforms? Persiforms. I too, bro, I like. Look, word zero three. Wait, word zero three says before he leaves. Oh, yeah, because he said he was zero the third, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We just called him zero junior for so long. I forgot about that. Have a nice trouble. Have a nice strategy. Have a nice trust. Conjunction junction. What's your function? A term used in positional astronomy. Put simply, it means that two celestial bodies appear near one another in the sky. When used in the context of our solar system, it often refers to a position where a given celestial body is aligned with the sun. For example, when Mars is on the opposite side of the sun from Earth, it is considered to be in conjunction with Earth. Mercury and Venus, which orbit closer to the sun than Earth does, have two types of conjunction. When they are hidden on the other side of the sun, this is referred to as superior conjunction. When they are lined up on the near side of the sun, it is called inferior conjunction. Okay, so when they're lined up on the near side of the sun versus when they are hidden on the other side. So, like, if it's, like, Mercury, Sun, Venus in, like, a straight line, that's superior conjunction. But if it's, like... If they form like a triangle with the sun being like the top tip and it's like Mercury, Venus, you can just draw a line between Mercury and Venus, but it doesn't intersect the sun. That's inferior conjunction. I think that's what that says. I think. I don't know. Look, I tried. Now we're getting to the real shit here. Ten Miyoji's picture. This is a photograph that Ten Miyoji was holding. The subject is a girl named Akane Kurashiki. Akane was one of the people who appeared in this game's sister title, Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, as a childhood friend of Junpei, that title's main character. A little, little jumpy boy. I remember him. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. 
in 999, she was 21 years old. This picture was taken nine years before then, when she was 12. Look at the left side of the picture. If you look closely, it almost looks like there's a man grinning in the background. Do you see him? Don't worry if it seems a little strange. A spirit medium has told us that the person in this picture is a guardian spirit who's looking after her. He must have shown up here because he's heard what sort of destiny she had in store and decided to see how she was doing. Wait, the left side, there's a grinning person? I do not see that at all. Where? Hold on, hold on. If you look closely, look at the left side of the picture. If you look closely, it almost looks like there's a man grinning in the background. So somewhere around here. I, I can't. Can I get rid of the text? I want to I wanna see it without the, without the text. I don't think I can. Please? I, I beg you? What if I go memo? No, that doesn't, that doesn't help. Get, get the shit out of here. I don't ever want to look at that again. Oh, we need that. That's the bomb password. Don't erase that. Ooh, that'd be bad. One of the bomb passwords, at least. Is it like, is it here? Is this the face? I, I can't, I can't tell. I tried. Look, I did my best. Anyway, Ambidex game. 45 Ooh. minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. What the hell? Somebody else must have opened one of the AB rooms. Why would they do that? Whatever. We should be heading back anyway. I headed for the door. Wait! Clover's voice stopped me. What is it? I turned to see her pointing toward the wall with the treatment pods. The screen, it changed. What? The screen on the pods monitor thingy. Well, let's go check it out. What does it, what does it say now? Oh yeah. It says recent operational records. I stepped closer and began to read. What it said was interesting. Currently treating one subject, makes sense. That one subject had to mean Quark. This was the pod we'd put him into after all. I read on. 0748, it's a time I assume, 748, one subject released. Eight. Oh six, one subject successfully restored. Eight sixteen, cold sleep mode disengaged. Beginning restoration of one subject. All prior records have been erased. Authorization admin. Seven forty eight, one subject released. Then, like twenty minutes later, or yeah, twenty minutes later, one subject successfully restored. What does that mean? Does that mean it, like, healed them? Like, because the treatment pods can heal people, right? So is that what that means? And then the cold sleep was disengaged after. That doesn't make any sense, though. How could it release a subject? Were there multiple people in there? And then it disengages... Surely it must mean, like, the cold sleep was disengaged, then the subject was restored, then released, right? No, beginning restoration of one subject. Weird. I checked the other pods. They were all the same. One subject release, yeah, okay, look, same thing. Beginning restoration of one subject. All prior records have been erased, authorization admin. Whoa, what is all this? I think it's saying that about eight hours ago, somebody in this pod woke up from cold sleep. Well, three people actually, one for each pod. They all say the same thing, see? That's before we all woke up, huh? I mean, it hasn't been eight hours yet. Yeah. So the three people could be three of us. They could have been captured earlier. Don't know how much earlier. Then they were thawed out eight hours ago and carried into the AB rooms. Yeah, that seems reasonable. I really don't think there'd be anyone else in here besides the nine of us. Well, I guess it's actually the ten of us, huh? Yeah. If you count the old woman we found, then it would be ten, wouldn't it? So, who were the three pod people? Don't ask me! Uh, the three pod people were Clover, Alice, and Sigma? Question mark? Sigma has memories from a certain time. Well, but there could be more. Because I thought Dio said he didn't know about the pandemic, right? And like... 
K doesn't have any memories, so he could be from whenever. K is probably a robot, honestly. Truthfully, that's that's logical. Clover for sure. Clover and Alice for sure. I don't think they know they're in the future yet. And same with Sigma. Sigma was definitely a pod boy. Beyond that, uh, up for debate. But I think it's Clover, Sigma, and Alice. And like, what the fuck's up with Phi? What, what even is Phi's deal? What's anyone's deal? Now How move on. How am I supposed to know that? All it says is subject. A, that's creepy. True. B, it doesn't tell us anything about who they might have been. Hmm. It doesn't say when they were put into cold sleep either. And this bit, where it says, all prior records have been erased. Authorization admin. That seems pretty suspicious to me. I wonder why they wouldn't just write the time, though. What? Well, you said it yourself. The log says eight hours ago, not like 9.15 a.m. That makes sense why it was written in that way, because it was like seven hours. Of, yeah, yeah, okay, so I was right. It, it did read, you know, like the most recent event at the top going down. Got it. Those minus signs must have to mean this far in the past. Who would ever write the time like that? Yeah, that is weird. Someone who doesn't want us to know the date. Maybe Zero Senior doesn't want us to know what the actual time is. Why not? Hell if I know. Hmm. Speaking of things I don't know, why did this stuff suddenly show up? It seemed like whenever it was, it seemed like whatever it was that triggered this activated as soon as we opened the door to leave. Wouldn't that mean Zero Senior set it up to work that way? Yeah, but why? That's why I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. What reason would he have to do that? Maybe he wanted us to see the records. Perhaps, but he deleted a bunch of the data. Why? Could it all be a trick? A trick? All of these records are fake. Zero Senior just set it up to mess with us. So you're saying this was just a joke? Well, I can't say for sure, but it seems possible, right? Hmm. No, it doesn't make sense. Well, let's ask somebody else. Maybe they can think of something. Yeah, you're right. If the AB gates have opened, we need to be heading back to the warehouse anyway. Yeah, and we need to tell everyone what happened with Quark. We double-checked that Quark was all right in his pod, then hurried, off, hurried out of the treatment center. Let's go! Me and you, Clover, skirt! We're definitely not gonna betray Clark, you're not gonna- Clark? <laughs> his name's Clark now. We're definitely not gonna betray Quark, you're not gonna be like, Sigma, I'll do whatever you say if you just betray Quark! Oh, I told you I'd listen to you! Ha 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 ha! Chunk leaves. Doesn't elaborate. <laughs> Hey! Is this another warehouse? It looks just like the other one. Hey, could you show me that map? Yeah, I thought so. This one is right under the floor A warehouse. Huh, so it is. Oh, are those... Those doors are... white. And there are three of them. Okay, let's go take a closer look. I knew it. These are chromatic doors. See? They've got a little box right next to them, just like the others. So these are the third round chromatic doors, huh? Guess we'll be coming back here pretty soon. Yeah, well, we might not have to. What do you mean? We both have 6 BP right now. Yeah, that's true. We're a pair, so? right? And who's yeah. our opponent? Quark? Exactly. But he's in the pod right now, so... We could betray him and if leave! No is recorded before the deadline has passed. Any non-voting parties will automatically ally. Do I get to leave Results in this outcome? Will be displayed in the warehouse. Like if I betray Quark, do I get to just dip? 
You aren't saying we should pick, pick Betray, are you? Weren't you planning to? I thought that was why you were okay with option C when we were making the groups. No, no, that, that's not... I just thought that with Quark's condition, I'd be able to choose ally and not worry about getting betrayed. Oh, come on. You don't need to lie to me. We're partners. That means we share the same destiny. So let's not hide anything from each other, okay? I'm not hiding anything. Wait, you're serious? You were really going to pick ally? Whoa, hold on a second there. We might not get another chance like this. Let's say we ally and get up to eight points. We don't know if we'll be able to get any points next round. For all we know, there might not even be a next round. There are three other people with six BP, right? Dio, K, and Phi. What do you think is going to happen if one of them gets nine points this round? That's not going to happen. Why not? Phi and Luna are playing against Tenmyoji. He's only got one BP left though. I really don't think they'd pick Betray. If Tenmyoji picked Ally, they'd kill him. The same goes for Dio. He's playing against Alice and Kay, and Alice's BP... No! Don't even think about that! I agree. But her BP is the same as Tenmyoji's, so unless Dio's willing to kill someone, he won't be able to get his BP to 9. Then Alice has to vote Betray. Yeah, that is generally the best defensive choice. But if Dio chooses ally... Then... Then K would have 9 BP. Yeah. Jeez. Well, it's just like I said then. If K gets 9 BP, then there won't be a third AB game. Well, that's not necessarily the case. So it's over when someone gets 9 BP. No. As long as that person doesn't open the number nine door, the game goes on! So you think that Kay will stay here, even if he gets enough points to leave? I don't know, but it's possible. No, it's not! Well, we, we can think about how we're going to vote later. For now, we need to get back to the others. There's a couple of things I gotta do when we get back. Fine. Okay, back to floor A then. Let's move. Let's mosey. <laughs> I turned and headed for the exit. After a few moments, I heard Clover's footsteps following behind me. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, hey, who opened the door? It was Dio. Oh, nobody told me I couldn't open the door. I I got the medicine for Quark, but I'm gonna smash it because I'm, I'm mean. Oh, like, fuck, so fucking stupid. Oh, my God. I thought I hated Alice. Dio, I don't know if I, I think I dislike Alice more than Dio. Just because of her, like, belittlement of Sigma when she's in the wrong, truthfully. Dio is just fucking stupid. Like, it's actually the worst plan in the world. It's truly terrible. Something about the hypocrisy, the entitlement of being like, you're stupid if you did anything different when they're the one in the wrong, that really gets my blood boiling. Clover. Yeah, shut up, idiot. Oh, thank goodness you're back. Yep. Are we the last ones? Yes. Hey. hey, where's Quark? Tenmyoji's expression was furious, and from the way he was stomping toward me, I felt like I only had a few seconds before I was on the ground with his hands around my neck. I explained what had happened with Quark and the pods as quickly as I could. So are these pod things really safe? Probably. Probably? No, they're definitely safe. He's fine. Well, are they safe or aren't they? Look, I'm just worried about him, all right? Can you take me to this treatment center, Clover? Uh... Don't worry. We've still got 20 minutes left. Plenty of time to go have a look and come back. Okay. Come on, then. Ooh, what's going on here? Wait a minute. 
As soon as she finished, she was off. Tenmyoji followed at her heels, and in the blink of an eye, they were gone, out of the magenta door. Bye, have a good time, Jumpy and... and wait, wait, what's his... Wait, wait, Clover, Clover, that's her name. Also, hold on, I never realized... I, I don't know if I said it, but I kind of just now realized... I thought Clover was her code name. Was that also her real fucking name in 999? Because she was called Clover there as well. What a what old coinky dink. All right, you guys got some splaining to do. I beg your pardon. You opened the AB gates before Clover and I got back, didn't you? I want to know why the hell you'd go and do something like that. Sigma, take a look. As she spoke, Phi Jesser toured the line of AB rooms. Only one was open. It's not like we opened them all up. So you're saying only one person or one pair jumped the gun here? Yes. Well, then who was it? I opened it. Oh, what a shocker! So it was you. <laughs> Figured as much. It's not really a big deal, okay? I mean, you came right back. Yes, Dio. Yes, it is a big deal. Why? If you hadn't made it back by the deadline, you'd have just defaulted to Ally. No, not just. Are you telling me you didn't know? Didn't... Didn't you find one of these notes? What? We found this in the treatment center. There was no such thing in the pressure exchange chamber. I didn't see one in the pantry either. Huh. Well, whatever. You should probably read it, though. Here are some more AB game rules for you. Not voting is not a option. If both parties refuse to vote, then every bunny gets penalized. In other words, one person out of every color group of three has to vote. I also just want to take a moment to say, this fucking game loves the phrase, in other words. They absolutely love to say something and then go, in other words, and then just say it again. Like, I, I don't... I don't know, it's kind of, it's just like weird to me. Get it now? If we hadn't gotten back in time, Clover, Quark, and I could have died. And you just- all Right, all right, I get it. Sorry. Cut me some slack though, man, I didn't know. So you wouldn't have opened the gate if you did? Of course I wouldn't have. What the hell, bro? <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever. Whatever, we know your type. We've seen you. You said the room you went into was a treatment center, right? Yeah. If they treat people there, I think they'd have shelves of medicine and stuff. Did you find any Excelivir? No. It's not really that kind of place. It just has those pods, and that was it. Besides, if we'd found anything to cure Radical Six, we wouldn't have put Quark in the pod. I see. Can the pod cure Radical Six? No, unfortunately. How do you know that? Oh, well, it said so on the screen next to the pods. Something about how it can provide relief from the symptoms, but it can't actually cure the disease. That's better than nothing, though. Hmm. Oh, right, there's one more thing about the pods I should tell you. As quick as I could, I explained what the records had said about the pod's occupants and their cold sleep. In other words, I told them all cold about sleep? how some people were in cold- Like, you see what I mean? It's weird. It's weird, alright? Are you suggesting that three of us were, until recently, cryogenically frozen? If you can trust what we read, yeah. Which of us are the pod people, then? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It didn't say who they were, or even when they were frozen. So this cold sleep, that means they basically froze the body solid, right? Not like how a bear or something hibernates where it just slows way down. Yeah, I think so. So what would happen to the heart? Uh, what? Wouldn't it stop when you were put into a cold sleep? Your heart stops. Your bracelet comes off. Ooh, good point. Oh, 
So if we go into cold sleep, our bracelets would come off. And then we can just defrost ourselves right away. You said there were three pots, right? We'd only need to do it three times for the nine of us. Uh-huh. I imagine that will work for you, but perhaps not so much for me. Oh, true. He's in the robot body. Oh, I'm sorry, Kay. The armor. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll figure something out. We should go have a look at any rate. We'll be able to come up with a plan once we know more. Of course. Uh oh, we're just... Oh, we're going. We're all going back what? here. What do you mean the cold sleep function doesn't work? <laughs> of course it doesn't. I'm sorry. You don't have anything to apologize for, Luna. Zero Senior must have just locked it down. But when Clover and I were here, it worked. Yeah, I remember checking it. Then that bastard set this up. Oh, that's low. It is not pleasant, but consider this. We have seen how thorough Zero is. Would he really have left such an obvious loophole? Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. If Zero Jr. heard me, he could have shut it off. Whatever the case, it is an unfortunate outcome. Unfortunate? Really? You sure? Aren't you just a little bit relieved? After all, we were gonna get our bracelets off while you were stuck with yours. How could you say that? I would never be so petty as... Before Kay could finish, the announcer's voice echoed through the facility. Two minutes until polling closes. If you don't come vote, you all die. And Zero Senior's grand plan comes crumbling down. Like, I don't get this. What the fuck's the point? Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded, oh, oops, don't mind me the deadline throwing my phone across the room. Any non-voting parties will automatically ally. Yeah, yeah, yeah look, we, we get it, Time's all right? Time's running out. We should get back, guys. I'm staying here. I can't leave Quark. Wow, Tenmyoji, that is ballsy, dude. What a chad. They could just fucking kill you. Are you nuts, old man? You're a solo. It's Fi and Luna, though. They're not going to kill him. Luna and Fi could kill you. Yeah, I know. I've only got one BP. Exactly. If you don't vote, you'll default to Ally. All they have to do is pick Betray. We won't. You staying here won't change our vote. Right. We always intended to choose Ally. Tenmyoji staying here is just another reason for us to stick to that plan. Luna has the same number of BP as you, Tenmyoji. Normally, the safe plan would be to choose Betray. Since you will be unable to betray them, then Fi and Luna can choose to ally without worrying about their own points. Yes. Well, there you go. I trust Fi and Luna. I'm sure they'll choose ally. Sounds good. Okay then, Tenmyoji. You take care of Quark. You think I need you to tell me that? I won't take my eyes off him for a minute. Come on. We don't have much time left. We need to go. <laughs> Can you... I'm just sorry. I just thought about like, because <laughs> inevitably I'm going to do it. I'm going to go back and we're going to have to betray Quark just to see what happens. And Tenmyoji's just going to be sitting there looking at Quark and he's going to watch Quark's BP drop. I do. And he's gonna be like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> like, I don't know why that's so funny to me. He just sees the number go down and he's like, those fucking assholes. <laughs> uh, back at the floor A warehouse, we open the AB rooms. Four minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All right, Clover. We should probably head in, too. Uh, okay. Don't be so weird about it. Hey, start. Boop. I would like to vote, please. Vote ally. Boop. Um, Sigma, do you remember what I said back in the other warehouse? Nope. 
Yeah, you told me we should betray Quark since we might not get another chance like this. Yeah. Right? Can I, um, take that back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we want to backpedal that one, huh? I changed my huh? mind a little bit after talking to Ten Miyoji. I think we should choose Ally. Hey, that's more than just a little bit. That's like someone trading in a Shih Tzu for a German Shepherd. Weird analogy? What? What the hell happened with you two? Did he say something to you? He... I can't tell you. What? Why? I just can't. You'd laugh if I did anyway. Really? I won't laugh. Promise. Well, I still can't tell you. <laughs> hey, come on. I promised. I told Tenmyoji I wouldn't tell anybody. Yeah, he's Junpei. We know. We get it, all right? Been there, done that. All right, fine. I won't ask about it again. But Tenmyoji doesn't really have anything to do with this, right? Our opponent is Quark. No, he does matter. Quark is really important to Tenmyoji. If we betray Quark, we're betraying Tenmyoji. Come on, don't you remember? When we were going into the red, blue, and green doors, Tenmyoji said something. I didn't say there wasn't anyone I trusted. There's one person, Clover. I just know that you'll keep him safe. I can't betray somebody who'd say that about me. You seemed pretty ready to betray him back on floor B. That's because I didn't know who he was. Oh, so you're saying you know who Tenmyoji really is? Well, if what he told me was true, yeah. One minute remains until Ambidex game polling closes. Please, choose ally. You aren't gonna try and vote yourself? If I try, you'll just throw me off, right? I don't think I'm strong enough to fight you. So... All right. With that, I turned to face the voting machine. The question was, what would I do? Ally or betray? Just as Clover had said, betraying Quark was like betraying Ten Miyoji, which meant, which meant it wasn't an option. That wasn't even taking into consideration that Quark was just a kid. And he was infected with a deadly disease that would almost certainly kill him if we didn't do something. How can I betray someone like that? Only a monster would take advantage of a helpless child for their own gain. On the other hand, what Clover had said in the warehouse on floor B was true. It was unlikely that I'd get a chance like this again. If I choose Betray, then I'd have 9 BP. I'd be able to escape this godforsaken hellhole. 10 seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. So, what would my choice be? What would I do? Ally? Or betray? I chose... Three, two, one. It's not an option. It's not an, it's not an option. We Round stand the old man. Of the Ambidex game has been completed. I am curious now, though. Oh, well, they both end pretty darn quick. Though the game does this a lot, where it's like, mm, it's only two things before the, the game ends, and then it's like, actually, it goes all the way down here. Like, the flowchart kind of lies, which I, I actually like that about it, honestly. Still, we still got this bad boy, and like, ooh, he's so... Man, there's a whole nother fucking branch to this, too. Like, god damn, I thought we were getting somewhere, but there's still so much. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex Gates, now opening. What did you choose, Sigma? You didn't see me push the button? No. Huh. Well, you'll know in a moment. Let's go. I gave her a light pat on the shoulder and headed toward the wall where the results would be displayed. Bleep bleep. Results from round two 
of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. Please direct your attention to the results screen. Oh yeah, shocker. Wait, why are you like Quark wasn't in the room? Of course he picked Ally. Like what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, Kay and Alice, they had to pick Betray, because Dio's a piece of shit. He absolutely would kill Alice to get out. Everyone knows it. Like Oh my god. That's hilarious. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet. To see your updated bracelet points. So you chose Ally, huh? Yeah. Quark is a Quark is sick, a kid, and unable to vote. I couldn't bring myself to betray someone like that. Thank you. No need to thank me. I only did what anyone would have. So, you guys chose Ally too, huh? Of course. Tenmyoji had only one BP left, and he was guaranteed to vote Ally. So there's no way we could betray somebody in that position. If we had, then he'd... he'd... Yeah, he didn't have much choice. Alice, K, and Dio, on the other hand, seem to have had a less pleasant round. That's one way to put it. I, dude, I swear, like, Alice has, like, you know, four fucking sprites, and 90% of the time, she's in this one. Like, <laughs> well, they're not sprites, but you know what I mean, right? Like... What the hell is your problem? You're either crazy or just an asshole. Were you trying to kill me? No, nothing like that. What? <laughs> what did, how are you gonna weasel out of this one, dude? How on earth are you? No, not nothing like that. I, I just, you know, I, I did never like. What, what do you, what do you say to defend yourself in this situation? There is nothing you can say to backpedal out of that. Like. <laughs> well then, what was it like? If we'd voted ally, I. You would be dead. The needles in your bracelet would have activated, killing you. See. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I didn't think there was any way in hell you guys would choose Ally, not with Alice's BP at one. What the? Why? Do we <laughs> Whatever. The only way you could possibly vote was Betray. Picking Ally when I knew you guys would pick Betray would have been suicide. No, I wouldn't have. You just would have lost some BP and then you could have. Oh my god. Nobody in this game plays the long game. Literally nobody. Nobody knows how to play the long con. Like, so it's okay. You don't have to maximize your point game every single round, all right? Like, if you try and squeeze as many points as you can in the first two rounds, you might not get to nine, brother. But if you just play the long con, you'll get there. Like, oh my God. You can't die. You've got six BP. Well, maybe not immediately, no. <laughs> Bro, you would have to lose three times in a row. Like, fuck off. But I would have been signing my own death warrant. Oh my god. Heck, not just mine. Everyone except K's. What? Didn't you think it through? Yeah, because then he would have left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your vote was always going to be betray. Let's say I was a raving lunatic and picked ally. What would happen at K's BP? Six plus three would make nine. See? Then it'd be game over. Life over. He'd open the number nine door and blow this popsicle stand. And that'd leave us twisting in the wind, living out the rest of our miserable lives stuck in this place. You see? That's why I chose Betray. I did it to save all our necks, including yours. Alice gritted her teeth and scowled fier fiercely at Dio. Apparently trying to think of a rebuttal before finally snorting indignantly and stalking away. Shortly thereafter, the warehouse was filled with the rumbling sound of the door sliding shut. The Ambidex gates have closed. Round three of the Ambidex game will be the star round. Star keys are required to open the gates. There is no set limit on usage of the star keys. The Ambidex gates 
can be opened as many times as the players wish to open them. As many times as we want, huh? Then that means... We can play the A-B game as many times as we want, right? Hey, didn't Zero Jr. say something about this? As soon as the gates close, your colors get all shuffled up automatically! The parent solo assignments hop around a bit too! Yeah, he did. Can you guys all show me your bracelets? I want to see what all our colors and groups are this time. Within moments, a series of wrists were extended for me to examine. Yeah, look, I don't... Uh, he's gonna talk it all through anyway, like, who cares? I see. Luna and Clover are a cyan pair, and Phi and Alice are a magenta pair. The remaining three are all solos. K is red, Dio is green, and I'm blue. So, how are the groups supposed to work for the next round? I think the next doors are gonna be those white ones down in the Florby warehouse. Yeah, I heard about those. Alice told me about them while we were here waiting for you and Clover. I think I've got them figured out. Yeah, so lay it out for us. How are the groups gonna shake out this time? I nodded and began to explain. Option A. Then Miyoji and Quark, yellow, would pair up with me, blue, to open one door. Fi and Alice, magenta, would pair up with Dio, green, to open another door. Luna and Clover, cyan, would pair up with K, red, to open the last one. Oh? Is there only one option? Yes. No other combinations would be able to open the secondary doors. Admittedly, Ten Miyoji and Quark aren't here for us to check, but I'm sure they're the yellow pair. If they weren't, then Sigma would be stuck without anybody he could pair up with. Oh, God. <laughs> I never thought I'd have to put up with Dio again. Well, you just didn't think hard enough then. <laughs> Sooner or later, everybody puts up with Dio. Wait. <laughs> what, <is that? laughs> what are you doing, dude? Like, what are you actually doing? <laughs> what is the... Ha <laughs> ha! Everyone has to put up with me! Wait, hold on. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> I kind of respect how scummy he is, though. Like, he's so overtly scummy. So, um, what should we do now? <laughs> so dumb. It looks like we have a lot of time until the primary doors open. Yeah, about 80 minutes. I'm worried about Quark's condition. Those pods can't cure Radical 6. He still needs help. Well, we don't have anything to lose. So we might as well look for that medicine. Uh, Excelivir, right? Yeah. What about the rest of you? Oh, I'll help. As will I. Me too. Uh, fine. Yep. <laughs> I guess I can help. What about you, Sigma? Of course I'll help. What kind of jerk wouldn't? Okay. We should split up and search. After some discussion, Dio and Kay were assigned to the pantry, Luna and Alice to the treatment center, and Clover, Fi, and myself to the pressure exchange chamber. Shall we regroup in the Floor B warehouse ten minutes before the doors open? We all nodded. Kay turned to Alice and Luna. You are going to the treatment center, correct? Yes. Then please remember to tell Ten Miyoji where we intend to meet and when. Okay. You must also remember to bring Quark with you. I am concerned about removing him from the pod, but it can't be helped. Without Quark's bracelet, Sigma and Tenmyoji will be unable to open the secondary door. Right. Good. Looks like we got all that straightened out. Let's go. With a final nod to one another, we split up, each team heading in a different direction. Got a feeling we're not going to find any Excel of you here, my guy. Got a pretty strong feeling about that. Could just be a hunch, but... No, so, this is the prep room. Uh, yeah, so this is the pressure exchange chamber. Like, you, you, like we, all, we all know what's up. We've been here, done this. There are two levels. The actual pressure exchange chamber is downstairs. How do you know that? Alice told me. She was one of the people who investigated this room. 
Did you talk to her when you were waiting for us back in the warehouse? Yeah. Well, let's head downstairs then. Good idea. Whole lot of nothing. So, this is the real thing. Seems like it. Why do they have something like this here? Well, this is just what Alice told me, but... Apparently, the pressure inside the facility was a lot higher than the pressure outside. That was part of a system designed to keep the virus from getting in. It did mean, however, that we need to go through a decompression process in order to get outside. Remember all those suits along the wall of the prep room? Those keep you from getting infected. We won't even be able to enter the pressure exchange chamber if we don't have them on. I see. Whoa, 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 whoa! Then that newspaper article was right? Unfortunately, that seems pretty likely. So, the air out there is teeming with Radical Six. Yeah. Something's been bothering me. What is it? Aren't you saying that if we put on those suits, we can go into the pressure exchange chamber and go outside, right? Oh, no, we can't do that. The door beyond the pressure exchange chamber is locked up tight. Damn it. It's one door between us and freedom. Well, if you look at it that way, it's the same as the number nine door. Eh, true, but I don't know if I believe it. Okay, yeah, but... Whatever. We need to be focusing on finding that Excelivir. Quark needs it. Yeah, you're right. I'll go look around upstairs. You two take this floor, all right? Got it. Okay. We looked everywhere we could think of, but turned up nothing. Eventually, I couldn't keep my mouth shut any longer. Hey, what do you think the deal is with this stuff about the world being infested with some crazy virus? A pandemic seemed like it would make the news, but I don't remember hearing anything. Wait a minute. You mentioned it, didn't you? Back when Dio was asking questions. We were in the infirmary. It was right after Quark lost it. Have any of you guys heard anything about any sort of viral pandemic? Ooh, Clover is not! Uh, oh, but no, she can access the morphogenetic fields! That might be how she knows about it, because I was about to say, that would mean she's not a pod kid, right? But, not necessarily. Well, no, but. And then Alice said, I have heard rumors about a virus being used as a bioweapon. So, what's the rumor she was talking about? I got the feeling you and Alice were talking about the same thing. Clover. What do you know? What are you and Alice, anyway? I heard you guys belong to some sort of organization, but what is it? Clover was quiet for a long time. She bit her thumbnail and looked down at the floor. Then, finally, she lifted her head and met my eyes. Fine. I think I can trust you. Just... Don't tell Alice, okay? I would never. Don't worry, I would literally never. All right. Promise? Promise. Clover nodded and began to talk. I listened with rapt attention at a complete loss for words. Here's what she said. Alice and I are agents of the SOIS, which is under the jurisdiction of the Department of Defense. SOIS stands for Special Office of Internal Security, and we're an elite intelligence division that investigates potentially disruptive or dangerous elements, such as domestic or foreign terrorists, radical political splinter groups, and religious organizations with extreme agendas that could pose a threat to the state or citizenry. Our existence hasn't been made public, so there are only a few people who even know we exist. You're probably wondering how I even got involved with something like that, huh? Well, it started when I met Alice. I told you that I played the Nonary game twice before, right? I'm not doing it, look, I'm not doing it in Clover's voice. Anytime we get the fade to black like this, you get my lovely voice. Deal with it, okay? 
Well, this was after the second time. So, uh, about a year ago. We just escaped, and we were all stuffed into this SUV barreling across the desert. I was driving, and that's when I saw her. Alice. She was standing next to the road with her thumb out. She was already working for the SOIS, and she'd been on her way to the building we'd been trapped in as part of her investigation. What? What? No, you're you're the you're the Pharaoh! You're the, the all, all ice, the lady bruh. I don't know about that one, Chief. But on the way there, her car had broken down. We offered to give her a ride, of course. After she got in, we started talking, and it turned out that Alice had gotten a tip that the terrorists she was after were in the building we'd been trapped in. Uh, <laughs> Santa and June, huh? <sighs> I guess you could call them terrorists based on what they did. We couldn't see how us playing the nonary game had anything to do with terrorists. But Alice had a suggestion. Maybe the two people who trapped you in there are the terrorists. Mm, seems reasonable. That didn't seem very likely to us, but we were chasing after them anyway, so we decided to bring Alice with us. Unfortunately, we didn't find them. As far as we know, they're still out there now, on the run. Anyway, we were taken back to SOIS headquarters and put into custody. I guess they thought there had to be some kind of connection between us being kidnapped and the terrorist group they were investigating. But they must not have found anything, because after a few days of questioning, they let us go. We all went home and returned to our lives. But things didn't go back to the way they'd been. My mom got real worried about me and my brother, since we'd gotten kidnapped twice now, so she hired bodyguards for us. You know, honestly, this sounds ridiculous at first, but if I was a parent and my kids got kidnapped, not once, but twice, I'd probably do the same if it was within my means, like if I could afford it, you know, like. <laughs> oh, I haven't told you about my brother, have I? He's super awesome for one. True, Snake's a real homie. I love that guy. Bring him back. And he was in both of the last two nonary games too. So anyway, we'd been grabbed twice. But the people behind the two nonary games were totally different. That didn't matter to my mom, though, so after that, all these huge men in black suits followed me and my brother everywhere. It was awful. We were always being watched. People would look at us funny because we were being followed by a bunch of creepy looking guys. I couldn't stand it. Just when I thought I'd finally be free, all that was waiting for me was another kind of prison. The only time I was really happy was when I was hanging out with my brother. So, we were talking it over one day, and we decided to leave. Like, run away. So we did it, and after that we lived on our own. <laughs> I just, incredible storytelling. We, t we, we were talking it over, and we were like, what if we, what if we just like ran away? So then we did. That's it. <laughs> then, then we did. <laughs> Then the, the story's over, like... <laughs> I worked in a cafe, and he composed music. He plays the harp, and he started writing this kind of new-agey music. It got kind of popular, so we didn't have to worry too much about surviving. Sometimes he'd play at little venues like coffee houses and stuff, and his fans would show up and listen to him play and cry. Or some of them would meet on some of them would meet on their on oh my god, or some of them would meet on their own and recite stuff from the book he'd written and play his songs. I know that sounds kind of like weird and culty, but they just do that stuff on their own. Okay, my brother doesn't have anything to do with that. Anyway, we we did that for a while, and then one day Alice showed up. I need your help, she told us. We need people who can do what you can do. Morphogenetic fields you see through the, the future affects the past. So we went to the location she gave us, and it turned out to be the headquarters of, of the SOIS, where they'd taken us after the second nonary game. They put us in a room with about a dozen or so other people who were all about the same age as us. A bunch of them looked familiar, too. 
It only took a moment to it only took a moment to realize how we knew each other. They were the kids from the first Nonary game. We were all excited to see each other again, and we were hugging and shaking hands and stuff. And then Alice walked in. The whole room went quiet. She walked up to the podium and looked around the room, making eye contact with each one of us. Right now, a terrorist organization is preparing for a major attack. They plan to trigger a viral pandemic. If they succeed, they will strike a massive blow against all of humanity, not just any one country. It's possible that we, as a species, will die out completely. Holy shit, this is- this- it made it sound like an accident from the whole Mars incident, but now Clover and Alice are like, nah, this is like a bioterrorist attack. I didn't realize this was a fucking Resident Evil game. Hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> Stars. <laughs> We are doing our best to prevent this, but we need your help. You are what we call espers. I can't take that word seriously. You have the ability to access the morphogenetic field. We need that. I'm guessing you don't know what any of this is, but basically we can do this thing that's kind of like telepathy. I mean, it isn't really telepathy, but that's probably the closest thing, okay? Espers can resonate their consciousness with another person through this thing called the morphogenetic field. The purpose of the first Nonary game was to research that ability. So they kidnapped kids who had the potential to do it and threw them into the game. Alice had gathered up all the kids from that experiment. Well, I mean, it had been nine years since it happened, so they weren't really kids anymore. Anyway, everyone she'd brought together was an Esper. That included me and my brother, of course. I bet you think I'm just making all this up, huh? I don't blame you. It is pretty crazy. I mean, I was even starting to forget I could do that stuff. So when I heard Alice's story, I was like, screw that. I was trying to move on with my life and now some shady government creeps wanted me to use some weird ability I had for them? No way. <laughs> Highly based opinion here. Honestly, me too. <laughs> Hashtag me too. I would react the same damn way. I wasn't even sure if I could do it anymore. Some of the others felt differently though, and they told Alice they'd do it. It was a job after all, and most people wouldn't turn down a salary like that. Oh, right, I, I forgot to tell you. She told us how much they'd pay us if we helped. It was a lot, more wealth than you could imagine. But I was still totally against doing it. My brother told me he'd go along with whatever I decided, so I decided we were leaving. A couple days passed, and then Alice showed up at our apartment. She didn't waste time. The people behind the first Nonary game might have been part of the terrorist organization Alice and the SOIS were after. Oh my god, it's the Free Your Soul group that fucking dumbass Hongu's part of! And he wants to- you gotta free your soul, get lost in the rock and roll, so that your spirit can ascend. It's some actual fucking, like, you know, the- God, what was that- that cult name, the, the really tragic one. You know what I'm talking about. Oh my god, it was a very famous cult. They were gonna board the, the spaceship that was flying by on the comet, right? E e e look, look, you, e I'm sure you've heard of it. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. Ah, fuck, it's gone, whatever. Same shit, and then, so they're like, we're gonna free the entire world by spreading this plague. Like, uh, come on. Bro, how? Pongo is actually such a fucking dumbass. Wasn't that, she, wasn't that she asked something that I might want to know more about? That got me curious. My brother too. But the clincher was what Seven said to us. He was one of the guys that got abducted with us for the second Nonary game. She called him on her phone right then and there and handed it to us. You guys are the only people who can do this. We don't know where Junpei is. Oh, Jumpy. He's gone off to travel the world looking for Akane. I haven't been able to get a hold of him. Please, just do me a favor and help Alice out. <laughs> Junpei equal like seven, another participant from the second Nonary game. Really, what? Akane, one of the people behind the second Nonary game. Seven was a Japanese policeman, which was probably how Alice got in touch with him. Anyway, that did it. My brother and I agreed to join SOIS. 
for the next couple months, all we did was train. Half of the time, it was general knowledge and technical skills an SOIS agent needed, and the other half was learning to strengthen our Esper abilities. They'd actually known about Espers for quite a while, and had a lot of techniques that helped us get better and stronger. After several months of hard work, we were finally ready for our first field missions. Mine was an infiltration. My brother stayed at the base so I could relay information back through him. Bro... I guess, you know what, I was gonna say, like, why can't you just use, like, a fucking... She's like a phone, dude, but I mean, you can, like, tap stuff like that. How are you gonna, how are you gonna wiretap or, like, block <laughs> psychic powers? <laughs> I was supposed to sneak into a research facility, posing as one of their workers, and then use the morphogenetic field to transmit what I found back to my brother. But... Everything went wrong. It was a trap. The whole research facility was fake, and I got captured. Alice had to come and rescue me. I'd been sending information about the inside of the facility to my brother, and Alice used that information to come and find me. As soon as she got there, she picked me up and carried me out. I was relieved and happy to be alive and free, but I also felt ashamed and miserable. While she was carrying me back out, I started to cry. She was just so cool, and I wasn't. <laughs> She was just, like, so fucking cool, and I was here crying, and just, like, I just couldn't handle it. Like, what the fuck is this? I wanted to be just like her. So from that day onward, I did everything I could to be more like Alice. Our infiltration ended in failure, but we did manage to get something useful. In fact, we were able to figure out where their headquarters was. The directors decided that December 25th, 2028 would be the day we would strike. This time, I promised myself we wouldn't screw it up. I was finally going to get some answers about something that had been with me for most of my life. But then, on December 22nd, three days before the raid, Alice and I were attacked by people in gas masks while we were going over our plans. And when you woke up, you were in the warehouse. Yeah. All that talking seemed to have tired Clover out. She sighed, and her long hair swayed as she moved. Hey, uh, I've got a few questions. What are they? Well, first off, your, uh, powers, I guess. I'm guessing you can't use them right now? Yeah. I'm not really sure why. I've been sending my brother messages ever since I woke up, but... No response? Yeah. If there was another Esper here, they could make me stronger. But that's just wishful thinking. Wait. What? Well, if there's someone else who's stronger than me, then they kind of absorb my powers. Oh, I'm the I'm the Alpha Esper, the Sigma Esper. It all makes sense. Oh, I'm stealing your power, Clover. It's mine now. Give me your psychic juice. Let's go. <laughs> Maybe. No, never mind. That's probably not it. Right. Whatever. I have some other questions, so... Moving on. I think I understand what Alice was talking about now. They were trying to spread that virus, right? Yeah. Okay, so who are they? Well, I can't tell you that. What? Why not? You told me all that other stuff, but this is too much? Well, Alice would be mad at me. I already told you I wouldn't tell her. But... Fine. Let me rephrase. When are they going to do it? Well, if we knew that, we wouldn't have gone to all that trouble. So you don't know? No. All we know is soon. But that could mean just about anything. Yeah. 
It could be next week or next month or even next year. Or br it's already happened. Like, let's be real. Shit's already happened. Or it could have happened already. Ding, ding, ding. Correct. <laughs> Wait, you mean they might have already released the virus? Wouldn't that make the most sense? Like, how about this room? Or that newspaper article? And the three people who were put in cold sleep. Are you saying you, me, and Alice were frozen and the pandemic happened while we were on ice? Wait, no, that, that doesn't make sense. Nobody else has heard of Radical Six either. Maybe they're lying. Really? All six of them? Well, if Kay really does have memory loss, then it's only five. Quark is out too. So you're saying Tenmyoji, Dio, Phi, and Luna are all lying? Hmm, I guess they are a little suspicious. Right? And what's their motive? For lying? How would I know? And what's the motive for a terrorist organization to start a pandemic? I heard it was something about purifying the <laughs> unclean? So fucking dumb. Purifying the unclean? Oh. Oh, unclean, 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 unclean. What? What are you doing? Shut up. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Just hold on a minute. I'm this close to remembering. Unclean, clean, een, <laughs> een, een. Uh, uh huh. She leapt up, suddenly excited. Neostigmine. What? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Uh, Neo Italy? <laughs> Neo what? Did you forget it already? I'm talking about this stuff! As she spoke, she pulled something out of her pocket. Yeah, 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 the stuff that stops the, the thing that's gonna kill me that I can then jump over to another timeline and use to save me. Hoo -hoo. It was the injection gun, complete with a vial of medication. Oh, right. I remember that. It was in the safe in the treatment center, right? Yeah! I didn't have any idea what it was, though, so I gave it to you. Exactly! Are you saying you've heard about this neostigmine stuff before? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just remembered. You remembered? My brother told me about that. Neostigmine is a type of colon esterase inhibitor. That means it's a sort of... Antidote for tubocurine. Um, sorry, but I still don't get it. How easy do I have to make it? Ugh. Okay, fine. I'll start at the top, all right? The stuff I've got in here is neostigmine, which counteracts the muscle relaxant tubocurine. Following me? Turbocurine is the poison in our bracelets, right? Right. It's the second thing we get injected with if we're penalized. First is the silver rail, which puts you to sleep. Nine minutes later, the tubocurine is injected, numbing your respiratory muscles. I guess you could say it'll really take your breath away. So you're saying this neostigmine keeps it from working? Yes! Oh my god! How many times are you going to make me say it? So we can just inject ourselves with this if we get penalized. Yeah! We don't have to die. We're going to be okay. We can only pull the trigger once, though. That means we can only use it on one person. Yeah. Well, it's still good news. This means one of us can break the rules once. Like... Let's see. The best way to use it would be for sneaking through the number nine door. True, I completely agree. If somebody gets nine points, they can open it, right? With this stuff, somebody who doesn't have nine points could still leave with them. Anyway, hmm. I'm gonna go tell Alice. What? Hey, Clover, wait! Clover! It was too late. Clover was already on the lift and gone. Damn. I was, I think, understandably upset.
With no stairs, my only choice was to wait for the lift to come back down. Oh no! As soon as it was back, I jumped on and headed upstairs. <laughs> True, same. <laughs> oh, good old Fido. Fi, where did Clover go? Fi, can you hear me? She didn't say anything. She just stared at me with her mouth half open. Her eyes seemed slightly glazed and her body was unnaturally stiff. Oh no, not you, Fi! No! Uh, Fi? I grabbed a shoulder and shook her gently. Slowly, she raised her arm, fingers drooping limply from it. She gestured toward the exit that led away from the warehouse. That way? She went out that door? Fi's only answer was a slow, shallow nod. Right, got it. Thanks. I headed for the exit, then paused. You look pretty tired. Get some rest, all right? Still no response. There was something odd about her, but catching Clover seemed more like a priority. Bruh, bruh, no, uh, 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 incorrect choice, Siggy. Incorrect choice. Nah, 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 nah. Who cares about Clover? Who fucking cares? We save Fi in this household. Nah, wrong. Uh, sorry. Try again. <laughs> I turned back around and jogged out the door toward the treatment center. Well, bye, Fi. Uh, it was nice knowing you. You were pretty cool. Yo, she's handling it pretty well, though. Like, she's still responsive. Because that's the whole thing. Radical 6 makes it seem like the world's going super fast for you, right? So that's why th she's acting, like, real slow. Hello. Huh? This is weird. Where is everybody? I'd assumed Alice would be in the treatment center, so Clover would have gone there to find her, but... The room was empty. Luna and Tenmyoji were gone too. They had left Quark and the readout on his pod said his vital signs were still normal. As far as I could tell, he was still asleep. Fine, guess it's time to go look somewhere else. I made my way out of the treatment center. No one in the pantry. No one in the warehouse. They're all gone. At the lounge, we're not kicking back, having a drink. What, do they all just abandon me? What the fuck is this? They all go out the number nine door? Bruh. Hello? Like... <laughs> what the hell? What is going on here? I can't find anybody. Every single room is empty. Wait, there's still one place I haven't checked. The infirmary. Bing, bing, bing. Hey, hello. Hey guys, how's it going? Well, we all doing okay? Uh, <laughs> hello. Hey guys. How's it going? Okay. I ran into the room and stopped short. I might as well have run into a brick wall. My chest tightened so much I could barely breathe. No. What? What happened? I felt my whole body convulse. Whether from terror or nausea, I couldn't tell. 
My legs went limp and I crumpled to the floor. Something sticky pressed against the palm of my hand and I looked down to see blood. A vast warm pool of fresh blood stretching out across the room, lapping at my legs and hands. I... This can't be real. How could... Everyone's dead, huh? They all, all commit... Yep, holy shit, guys. Wow! God damn, dude! Jesus! In the middle of the lake of blood, like an island of flesh, were bodies. You know who I'm not noticing here? We got Fi, got Tenmyoji, Luna, Clover, Alice, Dio. One, two, three, four, five, six. Quark's in the pod. That makes seven. Sigma, myself, is here. That makes eight. Okay. Okay, you got something you want to tell me? Okay. Hey, hey, okay. Fuck happened, okay? You wanna, you wanna tell me what the fuck's going on here, okay? They were a bloody tangle of lifeless limbs and dead eyes. Too much blood and chaos for me to tell who was who. Bro, like, I mean, come on, that's a little extreme. Had they sliced themselves open or stabbed one another? I couldn't tell. All the blood. Too much blood. Whatever they'd done, it was clear what tool they'd used to do it. A scalpel lay in the blood next to them, its handle and blade streaked with gore. This was how they had died. This tiny blade. Oh god. This is it. It's all over. This is how it ends. That's right. I have to end it. This nightmare will finally be over. Time to wake up. My fingers scraped across the floor as I picked up the scalpel. I lifted it slowly, carefully to my neck, as if someone were guiding my hand with theirs, and drew it across my throat. Bad end. Bad end. Died a radical six end. What, you gonna play the credits? Is this a real ending? Bro. What do you mean? No, just bad end. Don't credits me. Uh-uh-uh. Nah, 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 nah. What? <laughs> Bruh. Okay, good. We don't need to see the credits again. I was... Clover end! <laughs> oh my god, that's so sad! Clover's ending is everyone just fucking dies! Holy shit, dude! Wow, that's truly terrible! Oh my god! Wait! Wait, but I know what'll save me! It's the Turbo Curine from this path! Hold on! I thought I... Excuse me, hello? Like, what the fuck, dude? Well, uh, honestly, this is a pretty, pretty good climactic spot to end it, so, uh, yeah, this is what we're gonna call the episode. Um, next one, just to give you a little preview, uh, we're gonna go ahead and knock out the betrayal real quick. I'm sure it's gonna be like, how dare you, Sigma, Wacha! get Vulcan neck pinched, and then bad end, right? It'll be quick. From there, we're gonna hop over here, um, we're gonna put, give Quark the antiviral medication, and then hopefully blast through this path. We'll see how far we can get on this before we hit another lock. And then... After that, and we're, we're locked out here, there's only one path to go through. Now we, we gotta go all the way back to the very beginning and hit this final branch. We're making some good progress, though. Like, we're, we're doing good. Um, for the locks, we need the Turbocurine to survive here. We need to find out who planted the bomb and who planted the bomb for both of those. So we need to find who's planting the bombs. I still don't really know who yet. I don't think I have enough information to make that deduction yet. But anyway... Uh, this is the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really, truly do appreciate it. If you look down in the description, you'll find a link to the Steam Store page. You can pick up the game for yourself and play it through and see things before me and laugh as I uh, guess incorrectly. That's a, that's an option you can do. It's it's uh, it's probably fun. I don't know. But anyway, 
uh, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it if you've made it this far. Um, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or I try to, and sometimes it doesn't work out. <laughs> anyway, I try to upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm pretty consistent about it, though. So look forward to videos then, unless I'm uh, a garbage man and don't do it. Haha. <laughs> anyway, if you made it this far through all my rambling, uh, or in general, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you. Uh, truly. I really, really do mean that. And I, I don't know how to make it sound genuine every time, but just because, like, I say it every time, but I really do mean it. Like, I, actually, though. Like you, you guys, you, you, you mean a lot to me. Look, we, we, I feel, I feel so, I just, I, I really appreciate you all. And I'm happy to see you guys come back. And I hope you have a good day or night or whatever time it is. And I'll, I'll see you next time, maybe. Okay, bye.